Hello, Julia Khan. Pleasure to be chatting with you here today. My name is Josiah Pohl, and I'm a research engineer. I'll be talking about some of the work that's going on over at the National Renewable Energy Lab. Um, I did just want to say thank you to a couple of the other people on the REOP team. Really, everyone over there had like Kate Anderson, a lot of really talented individuals who are doing some really great work, and I'm really excited to share what I have for you today. I did just want to start off by saying that this isn't going to be super in the weeds technical talk, just because it is a bit shorter. I'll just be sharing kind of our learning experience, uh, integrating Julia into our production level code, as well as maybe some considerations you might have doing something similar, and you know, open up the the door to contact me if you're looking to chat. You know, I'm. I'm certainly no Julia expert, and I'm, I'm more than happy to talk with anyone who's getting started and, and looking to do a project similar to this. So I'm going to start off with just a, a little bit of background of the, the project that we used all this in. It's going to be Reopt Lite, um, kind of our, our open source version of this. Reopt Lite is a techno-economic optimization tool that takes resource data for energy generation assets as well as utility bills and utility bill structure and optimizes the sizing and dispatch of each of those assets um, to, to meet your renewable energy needs or just to, to lower your, your overall costs. And at the heart of all of this is a, a mixed energy program um, that we're looking to transition over to Julia. And so why, why are we looking to switch? And why were we looking to switch? It's because the, the original optimization model was written in a proprietary language called Express Mosul. And this proprietary language has attached to it a very expensive price tag, which you know creates some barriers to entry for various people that we'd like to be able to collaborate with. It also forces us to use kind of some suboptimal workflows. We have it uh, currently our, our Python API was saving data to be read in by the, the optimization model and saving all of that data to hard disk to be read in by the API to send kind of back to the user. And, and it was just kind of a clunky handshake that we were looking to get past. And, well, I believe there's probably some, some offerings from um, the actual licensing company that, that could help us with that. We are looking to depart from it as well, and it was a good time to fix all of that while we were at it. Some, and then as well, we were looking at kind of other projects across the labs that are using Julia, and there's you know, plenty of people that are going in that general direction for the computational software, and everyone has the same thing to say. It's really the best way to get the performance without all the cumbersome development that you'd find normally within these such sorts of projects. So along with that, kind of in the optimization community, some those of you that know is that having kind of a solver agnostic model really opens up some more collaboration for you. you know, frequently you're tied to a specific solver and if someone else has a different license or no license at all, um, you're, you're not really able to, to easily switch between them. And then there's also, you know, a plethora of free solvers that are only getting better and better that we want our users to be taking our users to take advantage of if they so choose. So throughout this process, we used a couple different packages heavily. The first one's going to be Jump, which is the, the mathematical programming package for Julia. Um, and it really is the only open source alternative that can rival the speed of the, the proprietary offerings. There's some really great mature Python packages that have a similar function but are limited by the structure of the Python language as far as speed of building models go. So Julia and Jump were a, kind of an, an obvious move for us if, because we are heavily um, need some, some good performance because we use this code as the back end for a web interface and just want that to be as responsive as possible. It's also one of the more mature Julia packages. Uh, and there's, there's plenty of people that are supporting it, some really great developers, and um, it's, it's really becoming quite stable. 1.0 is coming out relatively soon to my knowledge, which is, which is super exciting. Um, and then our, our experience with using this was that there, there's certainly some changes. You, you can't write it exactly the same way that you would in a regular algebraic modeling language, um, but all of that's really tied into to nuances of Julia itself. You know, type stability and, and scoping is all super important in, in this area as well, and getting used to that was something that took a little bit of time. Uh, the jump developers, though, were super helpful in our, our experience. They were willing to come hop on and, and kind of show us where we were struggling to get speed and things we could do to speed everything up as well as you know at, at in the end we were we were pretty happy with where we got to and we were certainly um, very excited and, and glad that we chose Julia. The other package that we used quite a bit was PyCall as well as its kind of analog PyJulia. This allows for the interoperability of Julia and Python you know we were no longer having to 
save data to disk and read it back in. We were able to do all of that in memory thanks to these tools. And PyJulia actually deduces the Julia types from kind of your Python objects as it's going through that transition for, for ease of use, which is super nice in some cases. Um, our experience with using these two tools was that environment handling can be kind of tricky. Python environments in and of themselves can be a bit of a headache and wrapping Julia up into that can, can make it only more difficult. So that's something to keep in mind as you're going through. The automatic type inference that comes from PyJulia is it's very convenient when you have relatively simple types and relatively simple uses for it, but it can be a bit more difficult when, when you need some fine tuning. Luckily, there are some, some tools for that given to you within the package, and um, I'm, we were able to use those to our advantage. We also found that PyCall and PyJulia didn't take up a whole lot of, of resources and, and were able to do exactly what they said without being especially expensive. So the other, kind of continuing on talking about managing environments, if you haven't heard enough, you know, Docker is your friend. Especially in this case when, you know, we're using Julia where its environments are, you know, I'd say relatively stable and easy to use, but for those that are new to the language, getting them up to speed without having them to fully master that workflow is super helpful. And really that ease of use has, has led to, to greater collaboration across the lab and outside of it. Um, you know, we're able to sweep all of that complicated package management for, for Python on top of it, as well as Julia underneath the rug, and, and just have something super robust. New, new contributors all the time are, we, we hardly ever set them up with the, the full environment outside of Docker and just get them spun up with our container and it makes things super easy. And then everyone on Windows who we alienated for oh so long is now up to speed as well, able to develop on their computers and no longer needing to download a, a virtual machine just to, to be able to contribute to the code base. So what does all lead to? Well, React Lite is officially open source. You can check it out on our GitHub page. Please go ahead and swing by, like it if you if you want to, and, and check out the Julia model at the heart of it. It's you know kind of a beast of a model and, and being able to you know sign off on this this great model that's really evolved over the years within the lab and, and make it available to everyone is super exciting for everyone on the Reop team. Um, the full code base can be run entirely without any software licenses. So you know, an open source solver, everything like that, no big deal for us. And, and you can do it all without any sort of big lab paying for your licenses behind you. And can be deployed with just a, a simple Docker Compose command. You don't have to set up the complicated environment that we did for so long. So super exciting. And where are we looking to go with all of this? We're going to continue to deploy the open source as our, our, the back end of our web interface. Currently, we're still using the legacy model but we're just kind of tidying it up and getting the wires connected to the, the web UI and all of that, and that'll be deployed relatively soon here. Um, we're gonna continue to develop more and more technologies that we kind of frequently do within the lab to, to be used within the tool itself and um, for, for the general public to see and use through the API or through the, the website. So more and more Julia development um, within the jump package. And then we're gonna to continue to convert more and more of the code base to Julia all that surrounding Python API will continue to dwindle and dwindle and we'll just get more and more performance increase as we continue to convert more and more of the code over to Julia. So that's all I have for you today. I definitely encourage you to reach out if you have any questions about what it looks like bringing Julia into a production environment that you already have going or kind of using Julia within Python or certainly a couple things that I've beat my head against a couple times and, and have some thoughts on. So definitely shoot me an email if you're, you're looking to chat or anything like that. But um, that's all I have for you, and I'll, I'll be answering questions. Thank you.